scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Let's jump to verse 5 please. The emphasis is verse 6. And from Jesus who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood please read with me verse 6 together one to read and hath made us kings and priests unto god and his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever the bible says he has made us kings and he has made us priests chapter 5 and verse 10 john is still receiving revelations in heaven and the bible says that we have been made kings and priests unto god and we shall reign on earth now this is very important because he tells us uh, that we are kings and priests then he now tells us the jurisdiction of our dominion that the reality of our kingship and our priesthood should be exerted within this territory of god's kingdom are we together now very 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 important the priesthood of a believer is is very important now i don't want to go into the theological um exegesis of priesthood the kinds of priesthood and so on and so forth that's not the concern tonight i just want to draw up something and then we pray this is wine pressed hallelujah praise the lord most believers do not understand the responsibility that priesthood demands now please listen very carefully the principles of dominion and i just just while on my way coming i was just going through the theme for the year the prophetic word for the year and i said wow this is amazing um we love to expand we love to think and speak dominion and that's powerful but there are principles that will make for the experience of the same and one of it is understanding priesthood our inability to understand the priesthood of a believer will keep us disadvantaged in spite of everything that has been wrought in christ now i love god because this is a bible believing church and this is a church that is theologically sound and and so i'm comfortable to share some of the things that i share i have i believe that i have pointed that here and is worthy of repetition that spiritual realities listen please spiritual realities are are twofold in their operation number one realities as from the standpoint of the christ it is always finished because god does not work with time his realm is not even eternity eternity is time without end god's realm is light god's realm is now there is no tomorrow there is no later in god's realm everything is now now are we together now but in executing the will of god the men that receive that word from god his prophetic speakings are limited by time and there is a reason why god put us in time many reasons um, there's no time to do that teaching if there were no time there would not be a possibility for mercy and forgiveness because god tied his mercy to time the bible says they are new every morning are we together now <laughs> 
is the reason why when the beings in the realm of the spirit default there is no forgiveness there is judgment straight up and they are bound in everlasting chains so the saints have an advantage living in time are we together now and so that 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 itself already shows us that realities that are finished from god's realm must have a technology of finding expression within our domain this is where the problem is for many believers because on one side we acknowledge god does not speak to men like he's speaking to men he speaks to men like he's talking to himself so god will talk to you as though the house were built God talks to you as if your children are already saved. God talks to you as if the prosperity is already there. Because he's not lying. It is his reality. He can't pretend it. Are we together? There's no tomorrow. There's no later. So when God says, I will bless you, he's downgrading himself just for your understanding. In his realm, there is no later. Are you getting the point now? But now you come down to the realm of man. You have to understand the principles of transferring this spiritual reality to become your experience. If you lack this spiritual intelligence, you will continue to confess. You will continue to believe that is profitable, but your life may never capture that experience. Are we together? I give you an instance. The Bible says from the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain. Are we together now but jesus had to come in the flesh when he came to the earth he came as the word the logos of god who now became flesh are we together walked for 30 years learned the law became matured went to the cross and paid the price of sin in detail your sin was not casted by a word he went through a process that made his speaking become a reality as powerful as god was and is he did not cast sin out of man he had to go through the protocol that will make the remission of sin an experience. Are we together? The Bible says no inhabitant in Zion shall say I am sick. But then he continues to release graces upon people so that they will actualize that experience. Someone may be respectfully speaking, maybe on a wheelchair or holding a crutch. Now in God's mind, that is an anomaly, for instance. But it does not stop the fact that that is the person's experience here and now. So he grants us access to his word and his spirit to superimpose the realities as seen from his realm. This is what it means in the Lord's Prayer, let it be done in earth as it is in heaven. It's already a reality there, but you must sustain an intelligence to make it true here and now. So all that we teach, I'm saying this because it's important to understand the context of communications like this. They are not an attempt to sabotage the finished work of God, of Christ. They are an attempt to partner with the Holy Spirit in the manifestation of those truths that have been finished. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is settled, not on earth, in heaven. It's settled in heaven it will take this is why he gave us the holy spirit we would not need the holy spirit if there were no need to engage these truths to make it true in our lives are we together so the holy spirit was given to us the word of god was given to us pastors were given after god's heart all these systems to coordinate us to a point where we are strengthening our understanding colossians chapter 1 verse 9 Apostle Paul is praying and speaking over the church in Colossae that they, they be filled with the knowledge of his will. Number one. Number two, that they be filled with all wisdom. And number three, that they be filled with all spiritual understanding. Because when we are filled with these truths, then they will help us to manifest, to manifest, to manifest these realities. Are we together? So we're back to our teaching very quickly priesthood we're dealing with priesthood that the believer has a priesthood dimension and you will need the understanding of priesthood to make manifest everything that has been declared for as according to god's word very quickly i want us to look at just one of the duties of priest first peter chapter 2 please first peter chapter 2 my god verse 5 
first peter chapter 2 and verse 5 everyone please read with me apostle peter is teaching us ready ye also as lively stones uh -huh, are built up a spiritual house and a holy priesthood to do what to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to god by jesus christ and so we see here that priesthood is tied to sacrifices that we have been made priests and that part of the jurisdiction of our priesthood ministry would require offering up sacrifices unto god this is very important are we together now and the primary listen very carefully the primary medium for offering the sacrifice of priesthood of the believer is prayer please write it down prayer the prayer ministry of the believer is one of the major dimensions of his operation as far as priesthood is concerned so prayer for the believer is not just an activity that has been endorsed by spiritual leaders it's not just um, a dimension that was demanded for from scripture it is more than an opportunity to petition god it is more than an opportunity to um, um call for help from heaven priesthood is a ministry say unto archippus that you take charge of the ministry that thou has received from the lord that thou fulfill it so the prayer ministry of the believer is priesthood are we together now this is very very important the church has been on a season of fast and prayer and just feasting on the word this is this is an engineering to bring stability to our priesthood so that through the ministry of fasting the ministry of prayer and engaging the word that every believer comes to a point where we are solid we are stable and we are strong this is a very very noble pursuit and this happens year in year out everybody say prayer, prayer. one more time please say prayer. prayer in luke chapter 18 verse 1 just touch a few scriptures and then i just build and we'll pray jesus spake a parable the bible says to the end that men ought always to pray that means you are only exempted from prayer if you are not a man provided you are a man prayer is not for prayer warriors prayer is not for men of God prayer is for men he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint first Thessalonians 5 17 the Bible says pray without ceasing it doesn't mean pray from morning to night it means be consistent be consistent in your prayer life james 5 when you read from verse 13 down the bible says is any man afflicted he says let him pray then the bible says the fervent and effectual prayer of the righteous availeth much are we together and then the bible now uses a personality to personify the ministry of prayer it says elijah was a man of like passion and that he prayed earnestly over a space of three and a half years that there be no rain and then there was no rain and he prayed again and rain came that means there was nothing special as it were about elijah except that when he stepped into that dimension of priesthood he functioned like god are we together now this is very very important prayer is important one time jesus was with the disciples and having a conversation with peter he rebuked peter and said peter satan desired to sift you like wheat he didn't say i advised you he didn't say i counsel you so instability is remedied by prayer he has desired to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not he says when you are converted use this same strategy to strengthen your brethren that means when you see them swaying is proof that something is happening to their priesthood you must get them back to the point where they pray that men ought always to pray and not to faint that men ought always to pray and not to faint that men ought always to pray and not to faint one of the dominion systems allocated for the saints is the ministry of prayer it's a principle of spiritual legislature god gave us authority listen very carefully 
over principalities and powers and so on and so forth listen a believer who does not pray will not be able to walk in the full expression of the counsel of God this is true for many reasons number one because God gave man a will this is very important one of the fundamental things there are seven fundamental things God gave man not a believer man as the zenith of his creation one of it is the power to choose are we together I said before you blessing and cursing life and death I only advise you I will not force you so God gave man the power to choose the power to choose mandates that you must always God cannot assume that you need his assistance God cannot assume that you need help God cannot assume that you need the intervention of heaven you must verbalize your request you must verbalize your need you invite God to your life on legal basis even salvation is not imparted outside of your will he loves you and he's made the way but he will allow your desire and your hunger to call upon him the Lord is nigh them that call upon him not them that need him them that call upon him are we together please so the fact that God gave man a will he is ever ever respectful of that will I can choose to ignore God I can choose as an act of my volition that Lord I'm not interested in your program for my life and he will honor it at the expense of the eternal destiny of many God still allows them to declare their need for him there are people going to hell every day in spite of the fact that the substitutionary sacrifice of Christ is a done deal are we together this is very very powerful prayer is important your priesthood is important because it is the system that outsources strength from a dimension that is not earthly number two prayer is the highest proof of humility because it's proof that you acknowledge you're incapacitated in yourself prayerlessness is pride when people are prayerless it is because they have found a way to flatter themselves into believing that outside of God they are still sufficient Apostle Paul was teaching us and he says we do not claim to be sufficient in ourselves he said he said our sufficiency is of God who has made us abled ministers when I go to God in prayer is a declaration of humility is proof that I need him is proof that I'm not trivializing his relevance in my life hallelujah we must pray as proof of humility the third reason why we must pray is that prayer is a spiritual system of transporting realities from the realm of the spirit to this realm it's a dominion system it's a system of spiritual legislature Paul was giving us the the revelation on how spiritual things happen in Hebrews chapter 11 the Bible says now faith is the substance of things hoped for he calls it the evidence of things not seen are we still together he says for by it this faith this technology the elders obtained a good report and then verse 3 says through faith we understand that the cosmos the worlds were framed by the word of god okay now this is a technology so that things which are seen were not made of things which appear that means the mother that gives birth to the realm of the spirit or the physical realm is the realm of the spirit that everything that appears comes from a realm and a dimension that is higher than this realm listen believers please listen listen everything you need everything you imagine is only possible because it already exists what you call creation is only creation from this realm from the standpoint of the spirit is only transportation now this this is the basis upon which your faith is built so you are not hoping things will happen it's already a reality you only call it creation when it manifests in the earth realm but just because you have not seen it does not mean it does not exist the bible says why we look at the things which are seen or why we look not at the things which are seen but the things which are unseen unseen not unreal unseen 
just because your eyes cannot capture it in your space does not mean it's not there everything you are looking for is also looking for you there is a system to be able to transport it to your domain the ability to make what is far from you come to you is dominion are we together that the opportunity the open door the influence that is far from me i sustain an intelligence to compress time and bring it to myself now that's real dominion because everything we need for life and godliness has been provided for the bible did not say it was is within your domain but it's in the earth you must sustain the intelligence to draw things from wherever they are that was the morale of the miracle of the bones in ezekiel 37. it was a revelation to show you that the concept of distance is relative that there is a technology that can bring things that are apart and make sense of them are we blessed the principle of spiritual legislature that means i don't need to feel bad about what is not there there is an intelligence in the place of prayer i can call a helper in the place of prayer i can call opportunities i can create possibilities i can from the standpoint there it's true this is how the great rise it is vain to run away to pursue things individually you can coordinate them like a control room in the place of prayer knowing listen very carefully knowing that every physical thing every including men are only listen very carefully every physical thing in the earth is a reflection of what controls it are we together please let me have one person any one person at all come sir if this man comes to me to bless me hold this and give it to me if this man comes to me to bless me you think he just came he may even think he just came but the realm of the spirit says nobody just comes now listen very carefully it's impossible for him to just come because a body without a spirit is dead there must be an agency so i have sustained an advantage to manipulate possibilities to my domain without forcing them i can make this man bless me without manipulating him because i can talk to the father of spirits the father abba the owner the controller the manipulator of every spirit sit down are we together so this man comes he can leave and i don't feel sad because i can make him come again thy kingdom your influence favor lifting speed so in the place of prayer you coordinate these possibilities as though in a control room and you are there manipulating things and you come out and play life like a chess and you watch possibilities arrange themselves listen i'm not trying to motivate you this is priesthood the excellency the advantage of your being connected to the spirit is seen at the point of priesthood you define your possibilities hello him adonai thy kingdom come Thy will be done. Hello, him at night. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Hello, him at night. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Listen. The priesthood ministry of the believer allows you to define the possibilities that you desire to be in your life you see the realm of the spirit is like an actor's script that is unedited it takes your priesthood to choose which scenes you you know how you act a film a movie there are all kinds of scenes at the point of acting but when the movie is released you don't see some scenes again prayer gives you the opportunity to select what must manifest 
in the realm of the spirit destruction is a possibility in the realm of the spirit speed is a possibility in the realm of the spirit delay is a possibility in prayer you have the opportunity to rise to a dimension and select the truths that are consistent with the character of scripture and allow this is what it means to bind and lose to allow for possibilities that must happen and it so happens that after a period of time if you do not select life was mandated to select for you and it's dangerous to outsource selection that is out of you will select things that you do not want to see priesthood hallelujah thank you sir the final reason i'll give it to you very quickly you won't believe that i've not even touched on what i want to share at all just no, 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 we'll, we'll walk with time. Praise God. Now, please look up. The final reason why we must pray is found, it's a very strange scripture that not many people, um, not many people look at. First Thessalonians chapter 2, please, from verse 18. Paul was teaching the church in Thessalonica. He was showing them a very powerful mystery. Read it with me if you're a Christian. One, two, read, please. Uh-huh. One more time, please. Once and again. Meaning I tried and tried again wherefore your favor would have come to you he tried once and again but satan hindered us wherefore your testimony would have happened since last year march but once and again a system of resistance the bible is not silent as to the fact that we are not alone in this side of god's kingdom the bible is not silent as to the fact that there are operations of darkness that attempt to sabotage the liberty of the saints paul took time to give us a sound theological exegesis theologically speaking the book of ephesians is believed to be the zenith of paul's apostolic ministry and he showed us the the strategy strategy to ward off the arsenals of darkness are we together now wherefore we would have come we would have come your breakthrough your lifting the manifestation of prophecy but satan hindered us the bible lets us know that satan is not afraid to arise and challenge believers it is true from scripture that satan is bold enough to challenge every word that god communicates to a believer in fact the bible shows us the the operation of satan in a very instructive way jesus is done fasting look up please brothers and sisters i think i've shared it here somewhere jesus is done fasting and the first person he meets after his version of wine press is not his disciples is satan satan is patient with jesus and after 40 days imagine the word the logos of god with the holy ghost in him and on him anointed without measure now prays to fast for 40 days this spiritual combination and the first person he sees is satan and satan is not shaking and falling under the anointing satan is standing in front of jesus and he's the first to broker a conversation Turn this stone to bread and the word is spoken now this is rema and satan does not fall he does not run away now i'm not downplaying the power of god i'm showing you something that should challenge you what exactly is satan afraid of because the word is there the spirit is there the anointing is there faith-filled utterances are there and satan is still standing then satan takes it to another dimension he holds the hand of jesus and takes him to a high mountain you are holding the word filled with the spirit and dragging him hello him adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done hello him adonai thy kingdom come 
listen to me everything good is why satan will come to you satan has no business coming to you until he sees that the jealousy of god has been invested towards your destiny he is looking for everything god wants when god looks at you he wants to know why when god zooms his attention on your family he wants to know why satan is threatened every time he sees the direction of god towards you i have loved you with an everlasting love i have drawn you with my loving kindness the moment jesus was born the spirit of the antichrist began to move through people to look for him to kill him he became uneasy the day a declaration came from heaven this is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased hear ye him satan never looked for anybody again including barabbas he left barabbas quietly because he was looking for a man who was a representation of god in the earth please listen to me very carefully it is important to pray because it is at the point of priesthood that we we establish victory experientially hebrews chapter 2 from verse 5 paul was putting a very strong balance he was bringing the the psalm of david about man and he was teaching us something that we must understand for unto the angels are he not put in subjection the world to come whereof we speak verse 6 please but in a certain place he testified saying what is man that thou art mindful of him not the son of man that thou visitest him seven but thou hast made him lower than elohim the word there is elohim god himself not just angels thou crownest him with glory and honor listen and thou didst set him over the work of thy hands verse 8 thou hast put all things where in subjection under his feet for in that he put all things in subjection under him he left nothing this is the speakings of god you see how god speaks he left nothing that is not put under him but come back to this realm now we do not yet see all things reality is finished from god's standpoint but in experience we do not yet see it so priesthood becomes the bridge between prophecy and experience that that which is finished can find expression to become manifest hallelujah it is true that when you live your life barren of priesthood you may never never see in experience the salvation of god so jesus himself would get up early and go to pray the logos of god prayed the logos of god prayed he prayed every day he prayed every time even at his passion he prayed my house shall be called the house of prayer the house of priesthood not just the house of fellowship not just the house of teaching my house shall be called the house of prayer it was whilst the apostles prayed and fasted then the holy ghost spoke unto them and said separate me paul and barnabas we must pray because there are arsenals of darkness that continue to wage war against the victory of the saints and prayer becomes the platform to ward off these operations of darkness when you study the book of acts the bible tells us that one time james was beheaded herod beheaded james and it pleased the jews and then he caught peter and peter was kept he was bound hand in chain and then he was uh, there were all kinds of military people around but the bible says the church prayed the moment the church prayed the bible records that an angel came and when he came he tapped peter picked peter and begin and, and, and he began to walk him out until he got to the iron gates that led to the city and then peter was thinking he was in a vision until he got back prayer when done with understanding is powerful we're talking of priesthood here is god blessing anybody yes one day things will change is a joke 
it will take priesthood to manipulate possibilities and turn your night to day time does not change anything time only reveals it will take your insistence in fact here's how the bible puts it resist the devil resist the devil he will not flee because he wants to there is a resistance i desire to come to you once and again even i paul but satan hindered us i hate to be a bearer of bad news but just because prophecy comes does not mean it will manifest this charge i give unto you my son timothy that you wore a good warfare with the prophecy with the prophecy with the prophecy the word of god has come upon my life this year that i am the head and not the tail i understand there is a devil somewhere who will want to take advantage of my background he will want to take advantage of the fact that my family is not connected to influential people to manipulate me but i stand in the position of priesthood to veto those disadvantages that's prayer that's priesthood many believers pray but few believers understand priesthood most of our prayers for many believers is just full of wise sayings and all kinds of things god why me that's not prayer are we together heaven helps those who um, help themselves that's that's not you see some of those things are very emotional things but they are, that's not prayer there are times that you will need to stand like habakkuk and pray stand upon your watch set yourself upon the tower you can know when things begin to go in a way and manner that is not consistent with the character of the christ that's not the time to discuss that's not the time to hope even if you don't know what is going on you filter the error you filter what is happening is in the place of prayer you will gain clarity the Bible says one time the apostle, listen very carefully, that the apostle had escaped from um, the island called Melita. Remember, he told the people there shall be no loss. And then the Bible says that the ship went and settled in an island called Melita. And when they came out because it was cold, they were trying to enjoy the fire. And the Bible says he was there with them and a viper. The viper was hiding, but it was the fire that made the viper come out. The viper was there in the log, but it was hiding. So when that prayer comes, it can mount pressure on the viper to reveal itself. The devil can be hiding around your finances, hiding around your family. It will take fire upon that wood to reveal the viper. Is God speaking to us? Priesthood. When believers do not understand this idea of priesthood they become weak they continue to hope that things will happen they continue to write down prophecies they continue to just mesmerize around prophecies and the word of god and it never gains ground men ought to pray and not to faint it is priesthood priesthood when you pray I need assistance from a realm and a dimension that is higher than the three-dimensional realm and you are able to call upon God and the Lord is nigh them that call upon him Jeremiah 33 and verse 3 says call unto me and I will answer I will answer not I will come I will answer in response to your call then I will show you great and mighty things that you do not know great and mighty things that you do not know when you pray things begin to shift in your life listen you an attack on your prayer life is a real attack listen very carefully it's an attack on your priesthood it's not just an attack on your spirituality it's an attack on your priesthood you will never be able to walk in the experience of dominion when you do not have a track record of prayer are we together yes spiritual legislature in the name of jesus i call for destiny help us in the name of jesus i declare my path is as a shining light it shines ever brighter this is priesthood you are in your room in the name of jesus i program january i program february 
no chances no excuses i program it i declare by the spirit of the living god the job is coming i'm speaking listen you are not just you are not just doing some pentecostal nonsense the word of a king has power the bible tells you the name of jesus ah the hand of god is upon my life i'm called beulah hefzibah you expect to be favored are we together and suddenly someone wakes up from his bed and starts thinking about you no sir people don't just think about people the spirit of god is moving in honor to your priesthood and now he's causing someone who has forgotten you three years five years how are you how is everything and you say fine you are not surprised you knew what you did how are you um it's been a while i hear you are in lagos where do you live and the holy spirit speaks to him that's not the issue give him the house i hope you i hope you 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 know that i'm not just joking i'm not just it is true you see let me tell you when you understand priesthood your life becomes a miracle and a wonder first to you and then to those who see you because physically looking at you you will not add up but you will operate by a mystery that will continue to scare people this is listen 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 this is what makes galatians 1 24 a wonder that men will glorify god in you not just for you not just through you you have become an extension of spiritual possibilities that vetoes your background vetoes anything that is supposedly a disadvantage what then is the excellency of the ministry of the holy spirit what then is the advantage of the word all of the spiritual arsenals that the saints have this is what makes us a chosen generation a peculiar people our exposure to marvelous light the light of priesthood i'm not disadvantaged it's true and it's not just by shouting it you can shout it and remain there for many years until you finally say look it looks like i'm, I'm really this <laughs> and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you ah. and we will never settle for less we know there's more that's found in you it's in you in you Lord we know there's more that's found in you. let me show you one dimension of priesthood and then we'll pray have, have you been blessed so far the Bible says priesthood is about sacrifice now listen very carefully priesthood is about sacrifice now most times believers even those who teach about sacrifice whether it's finance or what service in the house of god the truth is that respectfully speaking most times we teach it from a fleshly standpoint and so it does not provide the power that the bible says should come from it are we together when peter had a vision and he was sent to the house of cornelius the testimony that led to that encounter was the fact that the prayers of cornelius and then his giving watch this please please understand this you will bless god and you will thank me for this revelation that i give you it will be a powerful tool that you will close and open doors with the priesthood of believers when you make spiritual intercession when you command possibilities listen carefully listen carefully please the bible gives us a very powerful mystery in the book of revelation that the old heaven and the old earth will one day pass away now this is powerful a physical space will one day move to where we do not know so automatically we know that physical scenarios can move they are living things are we together 
a life and a destiny that is full of pain is a physical scenario akin to an old heaven and an old earth that there is a technology that can move a sin out of a man's life and bring another one follow me please now he says that in terms of the new jerusalem but it's a principle you must understand that means that i must find a way and i can find a way to close certain seasons in my life and open others if the old heaven and the old earth can go away then it means anything in my life i can choose that the time has come for a phase of my life to go away and i want to show you the technology that controls that outcome pray in the spirit for one minute please pray in the spirit for one minute in the name of jesus I pray that you will use this truth and reprogram your life and turn your life and your destiny into a wonder please let me have your attention for a few minutes we're going to pray Genesis 8 22 please look up the Bible says that when the earth was judged the earth was judged with flood flood is one of the elements of the supernatural is water and then the animals came and Noah offered it was a sacrifice please look up of all of the clean beasts he offered sacrifice and then the lord smelled a sweet savor from it and made a proclamation that is very very prophetic it says while the earth so the earth is involved in this talk look up please while the earth remains seed time and harvest and cold and heat and summer and winter and day and night shall not cease it's an ordinance that came from the mouth of god are we together now that seed time and harvest shall not cease now watch this the principle of what in the body of it's been known for many years and not many people have understood it is called the principle of seed faith listen very carefully please listen great men like Ora Roberts and Kenneth E. Hagin and great fathers of faith patriarchs who have gone transited in glory they did their best to explain it as best as they understood but remember revelation is progressive are we together now yes so they communicated the perspectives that God gave to them but one of the advantage of the apostolic and the prophetic ministry is that you are given illumination by the spirit to see and then you are granted the grace that can make all men see Ephesians 3 is a grace that makes men see not just men here men see insight illumination understanding now please look up the principle of seed faith please look up you're about to learn something that will change your life forever the principle of seed faith is the only principle that is able to mimic what jesus did jesus said verily verily i say unto you he said except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies it abides alone are we bible students and that means that the principle of resurrection is such that the seed dies not that the seed enters the ground Entering the ground is not death. Death, therefore, is not the cessation of life. It is the gateway into another realm. We call it the cess Listen, listen, listen. Listen, you have to understand this. That means the door that leads to life is called death. 
death is not a dead end death is a door when you want to go into life you follow the door called death now watch this that means watch this please oh dear when jesus was about to end a dispensation and begin another one he followed the door of death are we together now and in dying in his resurrection he brought many sons into glory do we agree now that is the same principle that happens with your seed the bible says that when you sow a seed and agriculture attests to the fact that when you sow a seed for a while that seed follows that door too you call it death it literally dies and then suddenly something begins to happen another life are we together now and then it produces after its kind are we together now the principle of seed faith is based on death and resurrection not money that means whatever is tied to that seed as the seed dies it must die are you getting the point now i can take everything in my life my trouble my pain my frustration and tie it to the seed the moment the seed dies the law declares that that dimension of my life must follow the seed to the grave and die too so i can end seasons in my life and open another one and the mystery here is found in um, first corinthians 15 please look at this verse 38 that god is able to give your seed another body this is still priesthood i can end shame and not have more shame as a harvest god can change the body of what died and make it laughter because seeds should produce after their kind but that there is a technology because there are some things you want to kill you don't just want more of look at this when you sow corn it's because you want more corn are we together now when you sow rice it's because you want more rice but there are times in the technology of God there are times you sow certain things to kill them not because you want more of them and so that your faith can reconvert that manifestation so that it is not what died that comes out as the harvest god is able to give your seed another body that means i can sow shame i can sow delay and tie it to a seed and bury it as that seed dies my shame too dies my delay dies now i'm not going to get more delay as a harvest i may get speed god can reprogram that delay and what will come as a harvest is speed this is priesthood we can use seeds with understanding to end seasons and open others but god giveth it a body as it had pleased him and to every seed its own body i can sow in tears and not reap more tears i can reap joy it's, it looks like a deviation of the law because every seed gives birth after its kind if i sow shame i should reap more shame but you can sow it because you want to kill it listen there are things in your life that need to come to an end and i'm telling you just saying it must come to an end is not enough he programmed the earth as a system of advantage for you that you can carry a seed with understanding not manipulation with understanding and begin to list the seasons that must come to an end if the old earth and the old heaven can pass away then everything in your life can also pass away so you can end seasons lord i do not experience favor in my life i move forward but by struggle that scenario is like an old heaven and an old earth you can tie it to a seed that's why i said it somewhere and um, let me say it here it is dangerous to steal money in the house of god because you don't know what who is killing with the seed is dropping if you pick a seed that has not died what is on it is also alive it's true You see what went wrong with Judas? 
because people were sowing seeds and judas was helping himself judas did not just die of frustration many things killed him someone's suicidal thoughts was sown away in that seed and he kept receiving it and did not allow it die your seed can program certain seasons in your life it is still part of priesthood now the, the the challenge is that because i guess because most seeds come as money and and so most people think that it is just a church manipulation to extract seeds from people now respectfully speaking i know that here and there sometimes people do not approach this subject of seed with integrity and and all of that but that does not mean that the principle is not true there are people who are long overdue to enter certain strong seasons and if god sowed jesus to get us then it is important for you to understand that you can bury certain seasons and open up others and there are times that god can give speed please hear what i'm telling you the things i tell you are the things that i do i have ended seasons in my life and open others it's not just the will of god you enforce it through priesthood remember that priesthood is about sacrifice the sacrifice of spiritual legislation in prayer the sacrifice of warfare in prayer and dram your spiritual climate using the power and the technology of the seed it is true and it works that you can choose to say lagos is a place of abundance and blessings and God is a God of portions that means there is a portion allocated for me Rehoboth there is a space that has been given to me but it is refusing to come and so you can call forth all of the lack the limitation and tie them to a seed as that seed dies you start rejoicing because you are looking forth for the harvest it works wonders and it is true the integrity of God is at the back of it many people have unconsciously receive testimonies from these principles and you just hear them say look i was tired i was tired and then i saw the seed and things change but god is adding to our understanding it is not the money that brings you the sacrifice it is the priesthood the revelation of priesthood that is back of it is what is responsible the second reason why the ministry of priesthood is powerful is because you see the anointing the word anoint is an ordination it's a system of authorization that allows you to function in an office it was an ancient system that was used for kings priests prophets to anoint doesn't just mean to spare with oil to anoint means to legitimize your operation are we together now that means that you are not illegal as far as that function is concerned there is a throne in heaven that backs your operation that's what it means to anoint so when the bible says how god anointed jesus he was authorized to function in that office of the christ when the saints are anointed we are given authorization on legal grounds the sons of Sceva were not anointed by the Holy Spirit. That was why the demon said, no, this operation, although you used to get results, but it's still illegal because the Holy Ghost is not the sponsor of it. There is no legitimate ground upon which you should operate that way. Are we together now? And now, please watch this. Listen very carefully. When, when the anointing of the Holy Spirit is his ability at work in a man is God's very ability at work in a man now watch this please the anointing and all kinds of graces are in dimensions and they are in levels anointing is not general anointing just because you are anointed does not mean anointed once and it can solve every problem that's not accurate are we together now that's not accurate if that were so the disciples would not need to be filled with the holy spirit again and the bible would not make reference to the lavish dimension of jesus is being anointed how god anointed jesus it took out time to tell us the extent of the anointing please watch this i've shared it here i think maybe at, at the bagada church or so in one of the conferences that the anointing is in levels and the level of anointing that you possess or a servant of God possesses 
also reflects the dimensions of spiritual problems that can be solved just because you are anointed does not mean every problem is within your jurisdiction to solve in experience now you have to understand this please let me have two gentlemen make sure they are workers also please just come okay yes you come you come sir thank you look at this look at this now this guy is in need of favor open doors this guy is in need of healing i can have the anointing the grace for favor and the grace for healing but not to the degree that can solve this man's financial problems i can pray for him it is the limit of my grace that will be at work in him even if he falls down and stands up are you getting what i'm saying now i can and the the worst part of it is i can have the healing anointing alone if i pray for this guy he will fall down but what he wants is result in the area of prosperity he will stand up and every other remaining challenge in his body will be solved but the issue of the finance cannot be answered because the grace the dimension the anointing of the spirit works within the jurisdiction of his allocation any anointing does not solve any problem no no there are dimensions this is where impartation and other things come remember joshua was already filled with the spirit but moses was told to lay hands on him again are we together now yes so i can solve this man's problem and pray for him and say in the name of jesus let doors be open and nothing happens and you find out that all that continues to happen around my life is that people are healthy they live long they live strong but they are broke it's a reflection of the deficiency of the dimension of grace at work in my life now when that grace comes it will speak immediately now let's 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 change it both of them are trusting god for higher dimensions of maybe spiritual encounters or finances or whatever and i can have that anointing but not to that level we are two preachers respectfully speaking listen carefully let's say myself and let me use a great figure like benny Hinn, you know or um tl osborne of blessed memory he's gone now these are fathers with proven track records are we together now now i can pray for this man in the name of jesus be healed in the name of jesus let the cancer go i'm calling the name of jesus i'm a sincere believer i'm anointed the holy ghost is at work in me and you'll be surprised the cancer does not leave and this guy will come and sit in a benihin conference where he's just talking to leaders and the cancer leaves now watch this the difference is not the it's not god it's not god the same lord is rich unto all but something the there is the level of anointing it's like money if you have 10,000, you can eat lunch, but you cannot buy a car. If you are hungry, rejoice because you have enough for it. But if you want a car, start crying because you will need more. Are, are we together now? So conferences like this create systems of upgrade. Where you can get higher dimensions of the same grace. And then other, I mean higher levels of the same grace. And other dimensions that are missing in your life. You can know what is on you by the results that are around you. Listen to me. Everything that happens around you is a report card. An attestation to the grace that you carry. This is true. Imagine this. I can be walking with this gentleman. Watch this. And then this man meets with me, come sir. And he chooses to ignore this one and he blesses me. And then he passes. I think he just blessed me. No, what was on me was programming my climate. Although we are close, we will not get the same result. Are we together now? You see that? There was something on me that was calling for favor from him. So although, yes sir although i'm holding the hand of this one and we're walking together i pray in the name of jesus that we understand what i'm teaching that way we will minimize wasting our time trying to outsource things physically realities are programmed the realm of the spirit is that powerful that what manifests in the physical realm there is a grace when you carry a generation must hear you 
it is not just because listen 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 it's not just because you are the greatest preacher you can have all the anointing in the world and a generation will ignore what you are saying there is an anointing that makes hear ye him a possibility a verdict from heaven that will compel every territory to hear your voice there is a grace that calls for destiny help us they don't just come no they don't just come they know you just because you are holding the hand of a multi-millionaire he can look at you and you can even go to the restaurant with him and pay for your food he's not greedy what is on you is not allowing him bless you because the same man will leave you and go to another person and say please can i have the privilege of giving you a car so he's a giver not to you but to the one who carries the grace let me tell you this there is nobody that is greedy is what is on you that is programming your possibilities it's true priesthood where we don't sit down just begin to complain why is this not happening my business is not growing no the world has about 7.2 billion people that's enough bodies for god to use to bless you that's enough bodies for god f6.7.2 billion people cannot forget you someone has to remember you but it's what is on you apostle why is it that people do not listen to what i'm saying it's because you only have what to say you have not gotten what will make men listen I will never be the same I've touched your grace my life must change I will never be the same I've touched your grace my life must change I will never be the same I've touched your grace my life must change I will never be the same I will never be the same I've touched your grace my life must change 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 please listen hicc let this wine press be the one that will shift you into dimensions and realms that will turn you into a sign and a wonder listen there is no dimension and hear me when i tell you this it is true there is no dimension of possibilities there is no dimension of dominion that you cannot command the key is not to chase after things no everything in life was designed to be attracted to be drawn by the mysteries of the kingdom and that which i show you tonight is called priesthood is the mystery of dominion the saints reign we program the spiritual climate over us you pick favor from the realm of the spirit add it to january to december you pick speed add it to january to december speak open door add it january to december program every good thing to wait till you are there before it shows up if you are not there then it is allowed to be delayed till you show up priesthood who are thou mounting before zerubbabel that stands before you my brothers and my sisters i don't mean to insult your intelligence but what is in a job that god cannot give you listen listen I, I don't mean to be sarcastic it is true every day there are people looking for people to bless in this city 
what is stopping them from reaching you it is not distance i guarantee you it is not distance and it is not familiarity because gentiles will come to your light not your familiar friends no when those who know you bless you it's difficult to say it's god but when strangers feed your flock then you know that it's a dimension of grace where you wake up in the morning and you collide with all kinds of breakthroughs by evening you return back home and say my god have i not been in lagos and people say ah your season has come you say you are right but it's not time that brought it priesthood opened me to another vista of spiritual possibility it's true we are going to pray and i i want find a way of believing what i share with you tonight your pastor allowed for this meeting so that you are shifted to another dimension whatever he does prospers it doesn't just prosper because he wants it to prosper it is what is on your head that is controlling what is around your life priesthood that you can pray your way up to date down tomorrow spiritually lord i fold that season like a curtain out of my life priesthood the power of legislature what kind of dream is this that i always have every time i'm supposed to be lifted i see myself in secondary school i see myself in my former house no i don't know what it means but i know this is evil because the bible says the path of the justice as a shining light and you use priesthood blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us that he nailed his cross That every good thing starts in my life but doesn't end but the bible says he has turned my morning into dancing not dancing into morning he has turned my sorrow into joy and so you you step back and and take away your priest your your regalia and put that regalia of priesthood it's time to pray it's time to rearrange possibilities it's time to manipulate realities to send angels to send the ministry of the holy spirit to homes to systems to structures compelling them to bow to the lordship of the christ hallelujah please listen i know there may be many pastors following online and so on and so forth why is my church not growing why is growth epileptic i have a message i'm a man of character and integrity i love the lord with all my heart what is this thing that is making people not grow no people do not just come they are compelled to come there is a grace that compels people it's called anakazo is the, it's the ability of the spirit he, he called for a feast and he sent to call people and they were giving excuses one said i just married i need to spend time with my wife another said i built a house i need to celebrate he said go to the street and the byways and compel them compel them listen to me listen there are dimensions you must enter but there are graces that is like that that expansion has not happened you can expand yourself like the molting of a snake come out of your old self into another dimension that sustains the power to command real results lord what is wrong with me i love god but i prophesy and every every case i mention is not true i say you are you're john i say i'm not john something is wrong i'm a prophet but he's not speaking get to the position of priesthood and pray out that shell of the flesh until there is a heavy investment of the spirit you come out from that place of priesthood and you become a blazing fire an inferno of fire Haya, haya, ha, hey, hey. Haya, haya, ha, hey. Haya, haya, ha, hey. You will. 
please hear me hear me you are a man of god in ministry here let me give you an honest counsel going around and giving cards for invitation and saying invite me i'm a man of god you will only mock yourself go back to the secret place the place where men are made for a generation and generate the kind of energy that defies being ignored that vetoes your background that vetoes your limitations pray yourself until you intercourse with an anointing a grace that a generation recognizes pray until an investment of the spirit comes upon you you called me into the ministry of signs and wonders lord my life cannot be buried manta salas kaparata ebreketekete baratos makaparakato seketekete pray hicc skala barata kat shobada sia prisu 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 encounter with power prisu encounter with authority the grace to change nations the grace to shift systems the grace to hold structures listen 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 my dear brothers and sisters hear me it is because the challenges in our lives have not met authentic priesthood that's why they remain are we together now yes sir the day you take the matters in your destiny serious you will melt it like wax before the fire because the bible says he make it his angels winds and his ministers flames of fire you can pray your way priesthood while men sleep you are praying Skaparush Kanata Lagos hear the word of the Lord I stand as a priest I legislate from Leki to VI to Ikeja I call forth my helpers I call forth the way makers used by God I decree and declare no more delay I program speed I declare by the power of the Holy Ghost I am Bula and Hefzibah I cannot be denied cannot be denied not on grounds of sentiments not on grounds of gender I stand as one who has been helped by God veto your background veto your limitations let priesthood become your advantage advantage in the spirit advantage in destiny that the opening of your mouth is the opening of the gates of the destinies of men someone open your mouth and pray cry to the God of heaven wine press let the maker make you let your priesthood speak tonight
praise the Lord. We are rounding up. Please look at me. Listen to me. You are going to pray just two prayer points and we are done for the night. You are going to challenge the Bible says, listen to me. It says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. It says, casting down every imagination is the word yes, sir the vain imaginations of men and bringing every thought to the obedience of Christ you are going to pray this is priesthood now are we together now you are going to pray and declare that everything that is not consistent with the character of God and the speakings of prophecy hear the word of the Lord I come as one sent anointed by God and you will lift your voice and begin to make decrees the Bible says declare ye that thou mightest be justified lift your voice and pray make decrees speak speak to systems speak to structures are there men of prayer here I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Ghost Lagos, hear my voice. Someone is praying. Bagada, hear my voice. Ikeja, hear my voice. Leki, hear my voice. Africa, hear my voice. I speak in the name of Jesus. Every barrier be torn down by the power of the Holy Ghost. Every climate above me, programming woes, programming delay, stopping a generation from hearing your voice, manipulating your influence across a territorial space. I come against you in the name of Jesus. Someone is praying. Someone is praying over your ministry. I challenge powers over your business. I confront spirits in the name of Jesus. By the blood of the eternal covenant, I silence speakings. I silence ordinances. I silence operations in the name of Jesus. Pray. Pray. Shalabarakata. Kebrantos kebariata. Shakata balakata barata. point please look at me it was the psalmist in Psalm 3 that says many are they that rise up against me he says many are they that say where is thy God but then he says but thou O Lord that you are a shield for me then he says you are my glory and he uses the next prayer point you are the lifter of my head it says my horn shall thou exalt like the horn of an unicorn even when the head of a unicorn is down the horn is not down the horn remains up at all times and i shall be anointed with fresh oil please listen listen i want you to take this prayer session seriously you are going to pray lord the grace the anointing the unction for the next level of my life the compelling ability of the spirit that must rest upon me and will resonate like an earthquake across a territory the inferno of fire that must come upon my life and turn me to a wonder i receive it now lift your voice and begin to pray the grace that will make my music ministry step into another dimension for the sake of his majesty the grace that will make my business become a wonder and praise the grace that will make church a ministry a wonder i end that grace oh god the help
of a mighty rushing wind and it came and filled the room. Greater dimension of the healing anointing, greater dimension of the grace for wealth and abundance, greater dimension of the grace for prayer, greater dimension of the grace for giving, greater dimension of the grace for service, greater dimension. Let me pray for you. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God, I decree and I declare over everyone here and all the branches and all connected online. I pray by the ministry of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, may mighty anointing come upon your life and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. The spirit of prayer and supplication that will grant you the grace to travail. I declare by the hand of God, let it rest upon you now. These three women, I'm not ministering this night, but these three women, I'm seeing oil being poured on all three of them. Help them, please. New dimension. I shift you in the spirit. New dimension. New dimension. New dimension. Take that fire. New dimension. Dimension of power. Dimension of grace. I amplify your voice. I give your products wings in the spirit. I command the generation to hear your voice. I place something upon your life that defies being denied. I forbid you from being rejected. I decree and declare 2020 expand 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 I speak by the spirit expand at the choir expand move to new levels expand increase increase in knowledge increase in prosperity increase in influence increase in wisdom hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.